So there's mold everywhere. It's in the steps that we take, it's in the air that we breathe. It's perfectly normal and it's part of life. It shouldn't be anything that you worry about. But what happens when it's inside of a house and it's in abnormal levels? The question is, is it affecting our stuff? Is our stuff getting contaminated? And if we bring that stuff to other places, is it contaminating those as well? Cross-contamination is a huge topic that we don't really explore scientifically a lot. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna dive into some testing. I'm gonna test some of my stuff, and we're also gonna test things from other houses. We're gonna see exactly where they lie under a microscope with how much settled spores there actually are. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I have some of my work shoes. They're pretty disgusting and gross, and they've been in God knows how many houses with mold problems, doing mold inspections and environmental assessments. So the question is, if we do a tape lift on this and look at it under a microscope, how many mold spores are we gonna find? How much cross-contamination is happening? Now, we also have one of these contaminated shirts from a project that I was on. And so this contaminated shirt came from a nasty closet with stachybotrys growing and penicillium growing on the bottom of the drywall and this was in the closet with the mold growth. So, is this contaminated? Then the last thing I want to check is one of my work shirts. I use this work shirt all the time. It's one of my main ones and so it's in a lot of houses. But I only clean it with just normal detergent in my laundry. Of course, I don't mix it with the other stuff, but it goes with my work stuff where it gets cleaned. And so the question is, if we disturb this and slough off a lot of particles right next to an air sample, are we gonna find mold spores in it? So let's get started. We'll grab a tape lift, which I have no shortage of in here. Now, how does tape lifting work? Well, let me make sure my mic is on first. <laughs> so basically the way it works is there's a microscope slide on the inside and it comes with a piece of tape. Pretty basic, right? You take the piece of tape, you stick it onto whatever you wanna look at and you slap it on the microscope slide and you can see it under a microscope. And mold spores are very easy to identify under a microscope. So that's really all you need to figure out if something's contaminated. Okay, so I'm gonna take a couple of tape lifts from here. The first one I'm gonna do is right here on the front. By the way, I don't really clean these shoes, not as often as I should. There's one. And then there's this crack right here. It has all this nasty stuff in it. And I can only imagine what's in here. So we're gonna get a tape from here as well. Okay, it doesn't need to be much. I know it doesn't look like much here, but trust me, under a microscope, that is mounds and mounds of dirt. All right, next on the list. Let's take an air sample next to this shirt. So the way these cassettes work, basically all this is, is it's a microscope slide in the center of two holes. So all this machine does is just suck air through the cassette and in the center you have your sticky microscope slide. So we have our air sample running and then I'm just gonna disturb this. Now keep in mind this air sampler, it's gonna take stuff from the air too. And as we know, there's mold flying around all over the place. The question is, do we see anything abnormal? Do we see an abnormal amount of mold spores, abnormal types of mold spores, those types of things. So I'm really gonna shake this up and see if we can find something. Okay, I thought I'd suit up with some PPE before opening this up because I really don't know what it's gonna be like. So the first thing I wanna do is actually do a tape lift on it to see if we can find anything on a tape lift. And Here's this nice shirt. I'm gonna get the top of the shirt somewhere where most of the stuff would have landed as it was sitting on the clothes hanger in the closet. So I'm just gonna put it over me like this and grab a tape lift. I'm gonna grab somewhere right here. And we'll grab one more. All right. So our air pump is running. Just try to slough some stuff off here. I can see some particles coming off of it. That should be good. 
Okay, we're officially in the office and I have my beautiful Leica microscope here. The first thing I want you to notice, just so we can get an understanding of scale, is this blue square that we're looking at. This is about one square centimeter. And when I put it under the microscope, I want you to notice this blue boundary. That way you can get kind of a grasp on how small these things are that we're looking at. All right, let's start with the shoes. So the first thing I want you to notice is that blue outline. So this is about 40 magnification. You're not gonna be able to see mold spores at this level. So we're gonna zoom in. This is about 100 magnification. Still, unless they're very large mold spores, you're not gonna see them. So we gotta zoom in even further to about 400 magnification. Now, we'll start to see them. You're not gonna know what a lot of this stuff is. That's okay. I'll point out if we come across any mold spores. So far, all I'm seeing is just a bunch of, oh, there's some curvilaria. So that piece that's doing a right angle right there is curvilaria. And then to the left of it, you'll see a hypo fragment, which is basically just a root from mold. Now curvilaria is really commonly found outdoors. So it's not necessarily what we would consider a water damage mold. So here's another curvilaria. It's oriented a little differently. It's facing downwards, but we have one there. Again, these are pretty typical to see outside. There's another tiny mold. So here's another curvilaria. My first impression after looking at air samples and direct samples all the time is this actually doesn't look too bad. I see a curvilaria there. I don't really see anything that shows me that I've been in these nasty places. So far I'm just seeing some minerals, maybe some fiberglass and some fibers, some starch grains, some pollen. Don't really see many mold spores. Some fiberglass. I'm sure there's a lot of fiberglass in my shoes considering I'm always in attics, so that makes sense. You know, I was actually hoping to catch at least a few toxic spores. That way we can at least see what they look like and I can show you. But I don't really see much going on here. All right, I'm getting down to the end here. And I didn't really see anything that was concerning, which was actually kind of surprising considering that they were for my shoes. But that really goes to show that, I mean, this contamination doesn't really occur super frequently where it's a huge major concern and if I just step foot into an area and step foot back out it doesn't appear that it's going to be contaminating you as bad as some people might think. All right now it's time for the fun stuff the air samples. We're going to look at my work shirt first. This was when we were slothing off from the work shirt and trying to figure out if my laundry methods are adequate. So it looks like we have a basidio spore right there which comes from mushrooms. This is a pollen grain. That's really nice. So I found some pollen on my shirt, or maybe it was just floating around in the air and got sucked into the sample. Uh, there's uh, starch grains and fibers, skin cells. I'm not seeing any mold spores. And you gotta remember too, I was shaking this thing pretty rigorous and hard right above and around the air sample. So if I was contaminating my garage or whatever it was in that area, we would see the spores in this trap, no doubt about it. And that's the end. Well, I feel pretty confident with me <laughs> the way I was cleaning my clothes. I was actually kind of worried about that because I, uh, you know, I always tell people just cleaning with normal detergent is perfectly fine when you're worried about settled spores. But I'm a different case because I'm constantly in really bad houses all the time, and so just to see if you know what I'm recommending holds up was really nice. I mean, there was really nothing coming off of this thing, not even a single mold spore after being cleaned. So that's cool. Now let's take a look at the tape lift that we pulled from the contaminated shirt, see how it looks. And of course we see a bunch of yellow fibers. That makes sense because it's coming from a yellow shirt. Zoom in a little bit, zoom in a little bit more. Turn up the brightness here. And let's start taking, well, right off the bat, actually I see right here, this could be Stachybotrys. It's hard.
hard to say. Let me zoom in. Now we're at 600 magnification. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to use my, I have it in my eyepiece here. I have a measuring tool. Yeah, I mean, that could be stachybotrys. Let me back out. Let's keep moving. If we see that being a trend, it's likely stachy. Here we go. These are a few stachybotrys right here. So the shirt's contaminated. We haven't even gotten very far and we see a few of them. Uh, looks like there's another one right here. You saw this closet. I wish I took a video of it. It was just a normal job, but it was pretty gross. I mean, mold going up the wall four feet high here. This is for sure stachybotrys. Quite a few of them, in fact. So we got, you know, numerous. So, I mean, we could, we could keep going. I'm gonna keep going to see if we see anything else, but the shirt is certainly contaminated from what we see on the tape lift. It makes me feel better because I was in this environment. I was in a lot of environments like this over the, over the course of, you know, a couple days and stuff. And then when I washed my shirt, we looked at the tape lift of my shirt, it looked nothing like this. So that's a good sign that washing my shirt with good old soap and water is actually helping. And then we have a couple here connected to, you see how they're kind of grabbing onto the fiber right there. And then one right next to it, kind of latched onto it there. Yep, there's a couple more surrounded by the fibers. And then you could see a hypo fragment right there as well. So the shirt's contaminated. So being in an environment, uh, being a piece of content that's in an environment with this stuff, you could tell that it's, it's contaminating it. But notice that you only see the spores. You don't see the actual growth, things growing in it. It's not growing in it. It's just spores that settle and land on the shirt. So after taking a look at the tape lift, I think we should take a look at the air sample and see what the shirt air sample says, because we know it's there. So if I'm rigorously shaking it about and above the air sampler, are we gonna see things pop up on the air sample too? Keep in mind, all those spores that we saw are just in one square centimeter. So shaking the entire shirt, I would expect to see something in the air sample. So let's find out. And here we are. Well, right off the bat, let me tell you what I see. Let me put it right in the center. Those appear to be some penicillium or aspergillus spores. You can't really tell just by looking at them, but it's one or the other, penicillium or aspergillus. Uh, here's another, here's a chain of them right here. Okay, let's keep going. I was really looking, oh, there's a uh, beautiful, sorry to sidetrack, but beautiful uh, pine pollen from the pinus family. That is cool, okay. So I don't know if that came from the shirt or if it came from outdoors. Um, a couple of penicillium aspergillus right there. I don't see any stachybotrys though. Oh, here we go. There's one. Yep. So that came from the shirt. Right, let's keep going. Some fibers, some yellow fibers from the shirt. That big thing, that big long uh, fibers um, from the shirt. Here's a couple stachybotrys right here. You could see they came in as a cluster. Oh, there's a chain of aspergillus. So, and here's another one. So yeah, this is, I mean, it's pretty contaminated just, just from really disturbing the shirt. But remember now, the shirt came from a super dirty environment. So this is, uh, you know, this is pretty expected from a really dirty environment when I'm just rustling, rustling as much as I can, particles out of the shirt. Cleaning it appears to be okay from just detergent and stuff because I was in this environment with my shirt that we, that we checked. What's the moral of the story? So the first thing I would probably point out is if there are things staying in a contaminated area and they've been there for some time, they're probably gonna be contaminated too. Now, we see here that this shirt doesn't have mold growing on it, so being able to clean the shirt, if it doesn't have mold growing on it, we could probably be pretty successful in doing that, especially looking at my clothes and also looking at all these other tape lifts that I happen to look at all the time just from work and experience. So cleaning things with detergent is pretty good when it comes to porous materials that have been lightly contaminated. If it's 
growing on it, however, if it's actually embedded in the fiber and it's growing on that porous material, you know, like a, a, a pillow, a couch, a teddy bear, a shirt, it has to get thrown away. There's really no cleaning that. But settled spores that just settle right on the surface, it appears that things are, you know, being cleaned pretty effectively with just soap and water. Now, as far as going in and out of a contaminated area quickly, you're not staying in there like this shirt was sitting in that closet for who knows how many months while this really nasty mold was sitting there, you know, four feet high off of the, up the wall. So just going in and out, I've noticed that things like that that I've looked at, plus my shoes, we looked at my shoes in that scenario, they don't seem to be affected. So if you're worried about walking in that restaurant that might have some mold on the ceiling or having a friend come over that you know is living in a moldy house, they're probably not contaminating your space. I mean, it's, it's probably pretty rare that they're gonna be sloughing off that much to where it's just contaminating your space. And you saw we were pretty rigorous with these clothes and even my clothes that I've been in those situations. And you gotta remember too that this contaminated shirt was just sitting in the back of a closet, hasn't been cleaned for some months. Whereas, you know, my shirt gets cleaned, um, you know, often. And it's not, a, it's not always an extreme case, firstly, so you don't have to worry too much. But secondly, uh, don't be afraid to call a professional that can come out and do testing like this, send it to a lab and figure out what's contaminated, what's not, or just have a proper remediation done if you have a mold problem. If you have a remediation company come out, they have processes in place to properly restore things. Whereas, you know, um, if, you, if you try to just throw everything out that might be contaminated, you might be wasting a lot of money and getting rid of a lot of valuable things. You might be getting rid of a lot of sentimental things that just don't need to get thrown away. Um, let's take my shoes, for example. I'll, I'll finish with that. So if I said, I've been in these moldy environments day in and day out, really nasty moldy environments. My shoes are contaminated. I need to toss them. Well, we just took tape lifts of my, of my shoes and I didn't see a single problem fungus on there. I didn't see any problem molds uh, that I'm concerned with. And you know, they're $200 shoes, really expensive. So being, you know, being that they're fine uh, as is, I could clean them and they'll be even better. So hopefully this helps with kind of some questions that you had about this. There's a lot to digest under this in this video. So if you have any questions, just uh, you know, add something to the comments and we'll be more than happy to help you out.